All right, so, so far, if you managed to create a product like I did, if I visit site, I've got my, my site, and then I can look at products page, and under products, I've got one product so far. I can add that to the cart. I get a little pop-up that says, check out, continue shopping. That's that fancy box that we set last week. There was an option somewhere in the many options that we set under settings, where it had said choose a choose a I forgot exactly what it was called but like choose a fancy checkout box or not and the default was not so you would not get any feedback the user would not get any feedback if they actually added it to the cart they would click it again and again and again and then when they eventually went to the cart they would have seven of those items because they didn't get feedback we went into the settings and we said activate this so that we get the feedback the user gets the feedback that they added it if I then click go to checkout, which is the same thing as if I, if a user were to go to products page, arrow, checkout. Under checkout, that's the same thing as go to checkout, I would see here my checkout screen. Please review your order. This is what I'm seeing on my design here. A simple table that shows products and quantities and all of that stuff. I've got the key lime pie. Oh, I added it twice. So $12 each, $24 total. I can remove that. I no longer want that product, or I want, maybe I do want three of them. I can add three, update, and I've got three key lime pies. Design wise, this is going to really depend on your theme. Again, saying that over and over. Depending on your theme, this may look a certain way. Our particular theme, the 2016 theme, is very basic. And notice we've got this big wide sidebar that might be kind of scrunching up your table here a little bit. Quantity on mine, it's going to the next line. On yours, it may not, etc. This design aspect of things is not super customizable with the built-in with the built-in tools. Remember, I've said if the developers, <coughs> if the developers of a plugin or a theme allow us to change things we're home free. We can change things how we want. If they don't allow us, we still have the ability to always go back to our appearance editor and here pull back the curtain and edit the code however we wish. And sometimes we need to do that because in this plugin, for example, they didn't give us the ability to change font sizes and other things to make this look nicer. But again, on yours it may look fine. On mine it may not because I've got a different size monitor. Maybe on yours it looks just fine like that. Quantity is not cut off. This is the thing then that varies. Depends on your theme, depends on the person visiting your site, etc. Um, so you say, I mean, I would say in this theme, the shopping cart's not working well. It's going to take a lot of fixing. Would you say that it's really bad? Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be okay with it. It might then. It might be. It might take a lot of editing within the editor of this theme, or I might choose another theme. Uh -huh. even, even the paid themes, they often have a preview theme version of it. Check out that other theme, and maybe that other theme gives you a much nicer looking shopping cart. Okay. So instead of trying to struggle with a theme, I mean with a, with the code of that, I might just choose a different theme. And then I might not be able to find the perfect theme anyway, and I would have to edit some code. And even right. over on WooCommerce, it has that limitation as well. That I've noticed that some themes are specifically saying that they're designed to work well with WooCommerce. Yeah. So if you're going to go with WooCommerce, that might be a good way to go then, so you don't have to do a lot of modification on the on code. Yeah, when you search themes, you might find WooCommerce optimized themes. Check okay. those out. You might also find WP Commerce optimized themes. Right. So both of those two are the big theme, uh, the big shopping cart uh, frameworks: WooCommerce, WP Commerce, Shopify. You might see that too. Shopify specific WordPress themes, uh, WP Commerce specific WordPress themes. So that might be a way to get the best results. Mm -hmm. Is it always something that you have to um, it's just that everyone's got their own way of doing e-commerce, 
and one comes out first, and then another one comes out later, and then the, the newer one sees what the older one did and wants to do it better, and then another one comes out to, to try to do better than the other one. So which is better? It's any of these things here. The right one is the one that works for you the best. So this one, which is one of the most basic straightforward ones, might be great for 70% of people, 80% of people, 90% of people. Uh, but then you're, you're not one of those 70%. And maybe Shopify works better. Maybe WooCommerce works better. Whatever we're learning here still applies to Shopify, still applies to WooCommerce. Just different buttons, different interface. Since it's all free and you can create any web, as many websites as you want, just play with it, find out the best solution for yourself, and you go with it. That reminds me that when, uh, I forgot to mention it when we did this, but when we were going to when we were trying to add the plugins, remember we went over, you don't have to do this, but when I went over to plugins and I wanted to add the e-commerce plugin, I had shown that this plugin that we're working with has three and a half stars compared to WooCommerce's, which had four. And I had said, for our purposes, because as beginners, this is really good, out of the box, works well. WooCommerce is more powerful, but it needs a lot more customization. What I also wanted to say was, this, this rating here, while it is pretty accurate in that it's got 233, and it had 12 reviews, I wouldn't quite trust it. 233 is a good amount of reviews to be a legitimate review. But what I will also say about this is, regarding any review site, oftentimes the negative voices might ring louder in that when someone has a bad experience at a restaurant, they make it their mission to go complain on Yelp. Whereas you had a great experience at a restaurant and continue to have a great experience for years on end and forget to go to Yelp to give a good review. Whereas all the negative people, it hurts so much that I'm going to go give that negative review. And I did read some sort of psychological thing that said people remember the negative stuff more than the positive, unfortunately. And so, same thing here. I downloaded WP Commerce because my instructor said it was amazing, and it didn't do exactly what I needed. I'm going to give it one star, two stars, whatever. So for some amount of people with over 60,000 installations, some amount of people, this didn't do exactly what they needed. So that stung, they went back, they give it a low review. Um, all of the happy people that uh, got their result that they wanted, maybe never remembered to go give that good review. So the right answer about what's the right plugin, if it works for what you need to accomplish, it's the right answer. This one uh, has our product, our checkout page here, calculate shipping. Uh, right here, if we set in a state and such, it'll give us a better shipping rate. If I do set California, calculate, then we've got these various uh, prices, like on weight. Do I want to do weight table? I don't, I don't believe I fully set up the table rate. This was about prices and such. Um, but I set it there, plus tax. There's that tax there. Total price, 4480 enter your email address. All of this is coming from our checkout settings. If we go to settings and we go to store settings, we have a checkout screen of settings. This is what we saw previously. Remember we had set it for Twitter address. So we can fully edit that, make it have what a person needs. It's asking state or province, which we can change that within the editor. We ask for full name instead of first name, last name. So that is editable. Billing info, shipping info, that's all editable. And here's the part that once you start to fill in one of these items over here, <coughs> instead of me refilling shipping, I have same as billing. And it will do it for me. That was something that was that we activated within the settings. Payment type. Pay securely through PayPal. That was one of our settings that we turned on, and we've got the test gateway. I, I agree to terms and conditions. Notice if I try to purchase, if I try to purchase, it will <coughs> it will complain. Please agree to the terms and conditions. Otherwise, we cannot process your order. So. 
they have to turn the check mark on and that's an active link that they can click on that will then show them here's what we wrote on the TNCs earlier no refunds items are manufactured in a facility that handles allergens and now that I've checked it on I can do I can go to the purchase process check out again it's not fully set up completely because I, I haven't set my um, I haven't set my PayPal address The PayPal address is you go create a PayPal account, they give you an address, you plug it into the settings, and then we're, we're ready. It would jump you over to a PayPal screen, which is the one that is fully secure. Right now our site does not have security, but once this is fully set up, look at this, it jumps over to PayPal.com with the full security. And if I've already got a PayPal account, I can just log in and it knows my credit card. If I don't have a PayPal, I can I can set this up with a credit card right now. If I cancel that, it takes me back to my site. Sorry, your transaction was not accepted, so we canceled it. But PayPal jumps in, jumps into the fray for a moment to process the credit card. You're not liable. You're it's not running, you're not collecting the payment, you're, you're not storing their, their credit card, PayPal is doing it. It jumps in the middle. It's right away, even there without a real email address of PayPal, it already wanted to collect payment. So it, it, it could be that straightforward. The thing about using PayPal or any of these credit card, card processors is that they will take some percentage of your sales. I forget what it is on PayPal at the moment, it's probably like 2.9%. So whatever your product is here, $40, subtract 2.9%. There's other ones, Authorize.net, Square, Stripe, etc. They're all going to take some amount, 2%, 2.5%, 3%, 7%. 7%. It just ranges so much. There's always a middleman when it comes to this. It's the cost of doing business. Sometimes then people say, okay, they're going to charge me 3%. I'm going to attack on an extra 3.5% to recoup my losses. Sure but that's still not going to really get you out of like your 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 own tax situation and such because you're going to get taxed on whatever price it was period not on the original price you see what i'm saying that if i tack on four percent to recuperate what i'm losing from paypal you're going to get charged when you do your taxes on the whole price of the basic price plus the four percent not the basic price minus the paypal price And so uh, let's create a couple more products and see how we can further refine this because at the moment, on the products page, it will show every product in one big, <coughs> in one big list. I don't want that yet. I don't want that actually. Let's go back to dashboard. Hover over products and then you can quickly go to add new. Let's add a new product here product add new be careful not a new page not a new post a new product this time we will create chocolate birthday cake description I'll just put some gibberish for the moment but again, I would want to fill that in with a real description. I can go as far as bullet points and such. We are attaching an image to the featured image, yes. But we can also put more pictures into this, into this uh, post. So, uh, not post, but product. So if to this product we wanted to add more than one picture, We've got the featured picture, the featured image, but if I add media, I have gallery up on top here. I can select more than one picture to make a cool gallery of my product from front view, side view, back view, etc. I won't do that at the moment, but what I'm saying is you can add a lot of content to the description. Tags. 
Now that I've written a few tags, if I click on choose from most popular, it'll pop up to show you. These are a couple that you've written. These are the, these are the ones you've already used. You can use them again. You can make up new tags at this point. Let's say I don't have a tag to add at the moment, so I don't have to add tags all the time. They are useful, but what I definitely want to add are categories. This is the chocolate birthday cake, so I'll add the cakes category and products. And I thought actually, uh, tag, chocolate. the chocolate tag, because later on I'll make other chocolate-related baked goods. <clears throat> featured image, I'm going to skip it for the moment, but we know how to add a featured image now, so I'll skip it. Product pricing. Uh, let's say again, a basic price, uh, let's say cakes are a little more expensive, let's say $14. sale price. For whatever reason, at the moment, these things are, are on sale for $12. So what I'll see in the products page, what users will see on the products page is this product, and it'll show like that, $14, sale price $12. $14 will be crossed out. So people will see, this is on sale, I'd better buy it. Right now, I'm only targeting the U.S. market in dollars. If I wanted to also sell this in other currencies, I could add a currency option and select other prices. This is also a cool place for you to, um, you know, be able to sell your product in different in different currencies. <coughs> Let's say I also wanted to sell this in Mexico, so I would put this in pesos and it costs whatever, 20. I'm not going to add extra currencies, but because I'm only selling to the US, but if you were selling in different denominations, you could do that. Now also, if you are selling to other countries and you're using PayPal, it will do the conversion for you. So you don't have to worry about actually adding different prices. If you are selling globally, PayPal will take care of it for you. Quantity discount. Once a person buys three of these, then each one will drop down to $10 each. And I can put this into different tiers. Once they bought five of them, well, yeah, five, then it drops down to nine. That's another tactic to entice people to buy more. You know, there's a lot of psychology behind salesmanship, decades of research and these tricks techniques to get people to buy more, you may fall into them subconsciously. But basically when people give incentives, that gets people to buy more. Um, you know, I never understood if you, if, you, uh, if you just buy a little bit more, you're going to save more. No, I'm literally spending more. I'm not saving more, I'm literally spending more. But it works for people. And uh, here's how we can do it as well. Just buy three of them and you can get it for $10 each. Yeah, we do need three cakes for the birthday party, sure. So just for testing this, I will, I will set that. We can, of course, edit this as many times as we want later. And the question earlier was on about, well, how do we handle donations? There's a button right there. If this is going to be a donation, I wouldn't fill in most of these settings. Now would turn on donation and now we've got a price. We would really only need to set price, nothing else, and it's a donation. But ours is a regular product, so I'll set that. I want to save, I want to save a draft for the moment uh, before we go on. Question? Yes. Um, what, is, what does the client see when you do take in a donation? I'm not sure if I understand what that is. Honestly, I'm not exactly sure because I don't deal with many clients that want to use the donation feature, but I'll find out right here. I turned it on. 
I went over to v, to the da, uh, to the to the visit site. Products. Chocolate birthday cake. Donation. It says donation rather than price. So for the people, it shows it under donation. Notice it ignored also sale price in other aspects. So it'll be literally for the user, they will see the word donation. And I'm sure internally also in our dashboard, it'll mark it as a donation. What you actually do with it, you still have to figure that out with your own you know, tax preparer and, and all of that. But uh, it has this feature. You might have that as well. I, that, that, that'd be something I need to look into on PayPal. And I'm sure they've got plenty of documentation on it. But they've also got uh, an actual call in number. If you don't know, you can actually call and get a hold of someone on PayPal to actually give you some real help. Next. We've got a little box that says stock <coughs> inventory, SKU. The SKU is the stock keeping unit. This is just whatever arbitrary internal designation for your product. Let's say I'm selling a cake. So in my database, in my QuickBooks, wherever that I'm keeping track, my ledger, however I'm doing it, all my cakes are marked with a C. And this particular one is C102. This item in my own internal system, my own bookkeeping system, is item C102. So that then my bookkeeper can look at my balance sheet and say, oh, you sold a lot of C102s this month. Um, this is optional. You don't have to write anything in the SKU. But once you've got multiple products, it is useful to cross-reference what you've sold here with other systems, your QuickBooks, your Ledger, your, your Tax Preparer, whatever. Product has limited stock. At the moment, we do not have this on, so we can create as many of these pies, as many of these products as we want. We can sell as many of these cakes as we want. Let's say we have a limited amount of those handmade you know, porcelain, statuettes. So if I turn on product as limited stock and I say I've got only three of them for sale, one of them for sale, then I have a limited amount. And what I can do is, it was in the settings, it was in the settings of the store, do you want to show this to people or not? I think we turned it on, so people will see there's three of these for sale. When stock reduces to zero, notify site owner via email, which is off. I want to get an email most likely when this product runs out. The administrator's email is in the settings. So send me an email when this product is out. And by default, the product is still visible even though there's no more for sale. You won't be able to add to cart anymore, but the product is still visible. This is up to you to decide what you want. Let's say you run out of that product. Don't show it on the, on the, on the products page anymore. There's no more to sell. I don't want to. I don't want to show it. One possible reason to leave it on, however, is to show people this product used to be for sale. You missed out. Maybe the product will be for sale again. Maybe I've made five more of this product. I could leave this product visible. I could go back to the description and says check back in two weeks when we have more and it'll be visible for people and they might come back and so forth so this is optional this is up to you remove the product when it's out or leave it on and that's a marketing tactic as well for you to decide question is that when stock reduces to zero or default why can't you change that to like 10 so then you always have to control the control that's very true unfortunately this plugin doesn't have that feature this plugin doesn't have the ability to uh, to have a limit besides zero. Probably Shopify and WooCommerce have that, but for here we've got it goes down to zero and then then you're notified. 
probably you can go into the editor and there's going to be code in here somewhere that says if product equals zero send an email. Well if I know a little code and can find my, the right place I can probably go in and says if code equals 10. I mean if, if product equals 10. If I hack the code a bit. I have the ability to edit all the code and we want to avoid it unless we know what we're doing. But um, yeah, that's one of the limitations again of this plugin. Maybe that's why people don't give it the perfect stars. For some people it works great, for some it doesn't have the one thing that I need. What else? We've got taxes. Product is exempt from taxation. So we said in our settings that everything is going to get taxed on our site. If for whatever this amount, uh, whatever this product is, we don't want this one to be taxed, we can deactivate taxes right there. If we want to override the amount of taxes, this particular product has to be taxed a different way, I can change its tax taxable amount here. But the, this is taxable amount in your currency, not percentage or price. Um, so this this would be uh, this is going to be an extra, you know, two dollars five cents, fifty cents extra tax on this, not a percent. It's, it's being added to it. I'm not going to override it. I set it up on the settings for as a default for a reason. So I'm going to leave that off. Let's back up over here to the center column. We've got variations. Variations is a bit complicated, but we'll get to it very soon, so I'm going to skip it for the moment. But variations relates to, for example, the most direct way to say it is, let's say I'm selling t-shirts. Large, medium, and small. Those are variations of a particular product. Large t-shirts, medium t-shirts, small t-shirts. Variations. We will do this in a little bit later on when we're, when we're going to sell cookies. I'm not going to sell one cookie at a time. I'm going to sell them in batches. Three at a time, six at a time, twelve at a time. Variations of the same chocolate chip cookies, mint cookies, snickerdoodles, etc. Variations. We'll get to that soon. We don't need it yet for this product even though I could, of course, have small chocolate cake, large chocolate cake, etc. We'll do variations in a moment. <coughs> product delivery, shipping. Product will not be shipped to, shipped to customer. So if I'm not shipping this particular product, I can deactivate that. I can override the default settings that I set on my settings, but I, I won't in my case. And I can override what I set elsewhere. This particular product, I don't know how much is a birthday cake weigh, let's say five pounds, pounds, ounces, etc. This five pounds relates to how much my shipping will be. Um, or if I have shipping is based on weight, I'm sorry, based on dimensions, I have dimensions. Or I can set this to flat rate. If I'm shipping locally, which is the US, it's always going to cost the same amount regardless of weight. Or if it's international, I can set a flat rate as well. I won't change anything here. got a tab inside of product, product delivery, a tab that says download. If you click on download, if I'm selling digital products, if I'm selling music, I upload my music file here. If I'm selling PowerPoint presentations, videos of my lectures, PDFs, whatever, any digital file. So again, with this plugin, I can sell real or virtual products. I can sell music, I can sell video, ebooks, etc. I can attach most multiple ones here.
I could be creative and I could sell a particular physical product and attach a virtual product as well. Maybe instructions. <coughs> Let's look at external link. Mine is kind of jumbled up here for some reason, but you should see something that says external link. This is only useful for some people, but let's say, here's a real-world example. We had a client that they were an author, and they had a bunch of their books that they self-printed, you know, Vanity Press printed them, and they had, you know, 500 of those copies, physical books, in the garage. So when someone bought that book, they would ship it from their garage. But some of the books that that author sold were also e-books, and they were selling them on Amazon. So we still set up a site for them in WordPress like this, and some products were shipped right out of his garage, and some products were downloadable via Amazon. He could have, of course, also selected download here, but he had a partnership at Amazon. So then his particular products, external link, it was added here. He had to put in his address at Amazon.com, He had his link to his product on Amazon set on the address here. And the purpose of this would be that when someone visited the site, they would see the product, they would click Buy Now, and it would take them to Amazon, where they would complete the purchase. And the button could say Buy Now, Buy on Amazon Now, Purchase Securely on Amazon, Download from Amazon, whatever. You can change the button that would take them to Amazon. So here's another thing you could do. You can set, you can make a website, but you can still let PayPal handle it all. You can let eBay handle it all. You can let Etsy handle it all by making your products have an external link back to your Etsy product. When someone clicks the link, I could then have it open in, in a new window, the same window, or whatever the theme set. This option overrides Buy Now and Add to Cart. So again, you can hand off the purchasing off to Etsy, off to Amazon, off to eBay. You put an external link here, the link to your product, and the person will go there when they click it. You can still show a description, product gallery, all of that cool stuff, categories, <coughs> tags, but the actual shopping will go and happen over on your Amazon your Etsy, your eBay, whatever. The last box to look at is product details. We have a couple of ways to do this. We saw that up on the description of the product we can add media and create a gallery. And that gallery is a pretty nice gallery. We also have another one based on the WP Commerce galleries, which is right here. Just another way to show multiple versions of the product. Try both, see which one you like. Either add an image gallery with multiple pictures here, or go back up to add media here and create a gallery. So what, what is the difference between these two? Between this PayPal and the Do they display differently? They will. They will display differently based on the theme. It's going to depend on the theme. Some themes are going to show that image gallery. <coughs> going to show it. Some will show it right here. When you've got your products, they will also show a couple little thumbnails there. And sometimes they'll show up when you actually click the product, you will see another kind of gallery here. It's going to depend on the theme. So I would try them both, see which one you like better, and stick with the one you like better. We've got short description. Short descriptions are optional handcrafted <coughs> summaries for your content that can be used in your theme. Depending on your theme, this short theme will show up somewhere. I don't know exactly where it's going to show up, depending on the theme. I know where it's going to show up for this theme, yes. But let's say we don't know where it's going to show up on a theme. This is what I'm saying about try it and see what happens. I'm just going to put in some placeholder text. This is my short description. I don't know exactly where it'll show up. So after I publish that, I'll go look. Oh, it showed up here. So then I can decide to use it or not.
personalization tab. Users can personalize this product by leaving a message in the product page. This would work, this would work great for my birthday cake. I would want someone to write, Happy Birthday, Johnny! Well, here's how they can do so. I'm going to turn that on, and it'll let someone to leave a description there. Or like special instructions. Think about it that way as well. Special instructions for your product. Maybe on my cakes, I'm also doing <coughs> that a person can upload Johnny's photo. And Johnny will have a photo of himself on the cake. So if I turn that on, a person can upload a picture. That gets into the issues of copyrights, however. Johnny uploaded a picture of SpongeBob SquarePants. Uh, well, I can't exactly accept that because that's copyrighted material to Viacom. So how do you deal with that? In the description, I would turn this on, and in the description, I would write up here. <coughs> Upload your own photo. Please, no copyrighted material. People, of course, might not see that, might not care, might not understand it. There's only so much you can do. You can further say, perhaps in the terms and conditions, any uploaded material that is copyrighted will not be processed and your money will be refunded. Or I can say it very obviously here as well. Or maybe I can add it to the short description too. I have various ways to try to get it, the point across about this copyrighted material. I have a client right now that they accept uploads for, you know, customized wristbands and such, but they will not accept copyrighted material. So all over the place, <coughs> redundantly on the site, it mentions that. Please do not upload, upload copyrighted material. We will refund your order. Please make sure it's only your photos, not famous photos, etc. I want to see what it looks like, so I'll turn it on. I can turn it off later. Metadata. This is very advanced. You don't really need to deal with it, but based <coughs> on your theme, you can create metadata, which are like special, special fields and special features. We don't have anything created here. I can add something. I'm not going to do this. This is very advanced. It depends on your theme. But I can create extra fields that people can fill in, extra fields that I can then display more content in the theme, etc. You can read that, you can follow that link to read exactly how that works, but it's advanced and you usually don't need it. Any questions on any of these uh, little boxes we've looked at? Go ahead and at the top right click publish. And let's go view and let's go visit site to see the result. Publish it, visit site, and then products page. One thing I see right away more details. My key lime pie doesn't have a little box that says more details. What's under more details? Click on that. This is my short description. Oh, I see. In my theme here, the short description shows up here. So I've got the description that I wrote over here. Description, <coughs> upload your own photo, please no copyrighted material. If I actually click on the product, more description. I didn't put a picture, but that's okay. Furthermore, oh, and here's my short description. It shows it here in a different way. Personalize your product. Complete this form to include a personalized message with your purchase. I would like to be able to change that to say something else, but there's no setting in the settings that, let me, that lets me customize that. I can edit it, however, in the editor. So I can put in a description here special instructions inside here. Upload file. Select a file from your computer to include with this purchase. So there you go. I, a person can upload a picture. Technically, actually, any kind of file. 
I believe they can upload a PowerPoint, they can upload a video, quantity, old price, sale price. You save $2. If I go back to my products page and I write a big description, the whole description would be visible, which might look weird. I want a little preview description and then read more. Uh, we didn't mention this when we wrote the blog posts, but this also applies to the blog posts. I might write 500 words, but I don't want all those 500 words to be visible at once. I want read more. I want the same thing for my products. Maybe one quick little paragraph, read more. Right now, read more is the title of the product, but that might not be obvious to people. If I want to make it more obvious, here's how we do this. This will be an example then of editing an existing product. Go back to the dashboard. Go back to all your products. Click Edit, hover over Chocolate Birthday Cake, and then click Edit. And I wrote a little bit of text here. Let's say I want to display just my first little sentence, and then they have to click to read more. I'm going to click at the end of this sentence. That's as much as I want to display. And then on your, on your tools up here, the third tool from the end, to me it looks like a little divider in the, in the middle of the road, but that's your read more tag. Wherever you've clicked in your description, and you then click insert read more, it'll break up that text so that now you'll have read more. When someone, when someone sees the product or blog post. Because you don't want to show all 500 words at once. You want to entice them with a little one sentence, and then if they really want to read the rest, they can click Read More. It looks like this when you're editing, but to see what it actually looks like, update it on the top right. Now that you've published it, you have to update it and visit site. Products. Shout the birthday cake, little bit of text. Read the rest. Read more. Click on that. There's the rest. All right, so here's what we'll do for practice. Go ahead and now you create on your own one more product. Go ahead and create some kind of cookie. We've got a pie, we've got a cake. You go in and you create a cookie. Make it up however you want, call it whatever you want, put a picture if you want, do whatever you want with it, choose any price. Go ahead and create a cookie. See if you can do that on your own and then we'll We'll go on together. Yes.
mean, when you click on that product, you went to the Disneyland product in its totality. That's what it means. When you're looking at it from the category as well, this top level, that does that. Uh, I would still use this picture, wouldn't I? If you're selling in some sort of like painting or jewelry, I would set the picture in. I wouldn't, however, set the picture in the very high quality because if you're selling your photography, But in a moment, we're going to do variations, oh. which will be how we sell to our next time and our total time. We'll just wait. We'll wait for a moment and then we'll do it. Okay. 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 So, hopefully, you've got some sort of basic cookie here. Uh, some of you are already asking about, okay, well, what about if I want to sell 12 of them and such? That's what variations comes in. That's when variations come in. Let me create a one very quick basic cookie just like you and then I'll show you what I mean here. So let's say I wanted to do chocolate chip cookie. And I've got some description, uh, category, you should have put it into category of cookies and products. Featured image, I'll add that later. Price, you might have chosen a price, I don't know, I'm just going to choose let's say five. But here's my problem that I'm saying. Am I going to sell one cookie at a time, 12 at a time? I want to sell a minimum of five at a time, let's say, or six. So this is definitely where variations comes in. For the moment, I'm going to set this to one dollar. One cookie, one dollar, which may be more or less than you would think a cookie costs. But for the moment, one dollar. Because I actually then want to set variations. And variations, I can sell them in batches. So if you put some value there, don't worry about it, but if you want to go back to your cookie and just put $1 for the moment, that's my base price, minimum $1. Besides that, don't worry about inventory and anything else, taxes or anything. I just wanted to create chocolate chip cookie, put it into a category, basic price. I will publish that. And now I want to deal with, I want to sell cookies in batches of one dozen, half a dozen, two dozen. That's what I'm going to sell them at. Six, twelve, or twenty-four. I'm not selling them individually one at a time. Well, maybe I want to do quarter dozen, right? Three at a time, six, twelve, whatever. I want to sell them in those variations. So here's what we need to do. On the left side, under products, we have variations. Let's go to variations. 